In this video, we're going to cover albedo and do some calculations on how albedo relates to the energy balance between Earth and Sun. So when there is light coming from a source, uh, in the case of the Sun Earth, the light is coming from the Sun, some of that is reflected, and the ratio of the light received by the body to the light reflected is what we call the albedo. We can put that in an equation form by saying albedo is the total scattered power over the total incident power. So we want to think of this as the reflected. That's what it means by scattered. And this is from the source. And in most of our calculations, we're going to be talking about the sun. An object that has an albedo of 1 is a perfect reflector. It absorbs nothing. And an object with an albedo of 0 absorbs all radiation. In other words, we sometimes refer to that as a black body. That's the theoretical object that absorbs and emits all uh, wavelengths of radiation. Some common objects have albedos listed here. As you can see, asphalt, you know, the stuff that makes roads, is a really low albedo. It absorbs a lot of energy. That's why it gets so hot. Whereas, uh, you know, whiter objects like snow and ice, they tend to reflect a lot of the object uh, energy and don't absorb as much. This map here from NASA was uh, taken to approximate the albedo of different areas of Earth, uh, with the water being excluded, so just the land areas. And as you can see, um, areas that have a lot of snow and ice or a lot of sand tend to uh, reflect a lot of that energy. And then green is uh, tending to absorb more of that energy. So you can see how it's distributed over the Earth. On average, we say the albedo of Earth is approximately 0.3. So that means 30% of the solar radiation incoming on Earth is reflected back into space. There's a bunch of different things that change the albedo. Um, so the ice cover and land cover, that changes the surface, uh, as well as things in the atmosphere. So more clouds reflect more of the light. Um, one thing we want to talk about here in regards to the greenhouse effect uh, is that ice cover here um, if the planet does become warmer, that means there would be less ice cover. And so in that case, if there's less ice cover, then more energy is absorbed for the sun. So sometimes we call this an accelerating effect, where if the planet uh, temperature increases and there's less ice, we're going to end up absorbing more, which will increase the rate of the planet temperature increasing. So we're going to look at some examples here. First one, a uh, scientist conducts an experiment to measure the albedo of soil samples. Sample 1 reflects 25% of the incoming radiation, while sample 2 reflects 40%. If both samples receive an intensity of 800 watts per meter squared of solar radiation, determine the difference in the amount of solar energy absorbed by each sample. So sample 1 is reflecting 25% of incoming solar radiation. In other words, it's absorbing 75%. And so for sample 1, we can calculate how much energy it's receiving as 0 0.75 times 800 watts per meter squared. And that gives us a value of 600 watts per meter squared. Sample 2 is reflecting 40%, but we're interested in how much this absorbs, so it's absorbing 60%. So sample 2 is getting 60% of that 800 watts per meter squared. So it is absorbing 480 watts per meter squared. And the question is asking us to find the difference in the amount of solar energy absorbed by each sample. So the difference would be 600 minus 480. So the total difference is going to be 120 watts per meter squared. So that's the difference in intensity absorbed. The radiant power of the sun is 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. And the average radius of Earth's orbit is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. If the average albedo is 0 0.30, determine the intensity incident on the solar panel with the sun directly above. So we want to identify a few things going on here. Now, intensity is the power over the area, so the power per unit area. In the Sun-Earth system, we have the Sun here at the center, and it's emitting radiation in all directions. And we have the power given to us, so the power of the radiation being emitted. 
Now, as this radiation travels outwards, it's becoming spread out over a larger and larger sphere because it's traveling in all three dimensions. And this energy will reach Earth eventually. Here's Earth. And there's this sphere of energy spread out with the radius being the distance of Earth's orbit. So we want to figure out the intensity at that point is the total amount of power divided by the area of that sphere. And since the area is, we're dividing by the area, you know, the farther away we get away from the sun, the less power there is, which makes sense. So if we want to calculate the intensity of solar radiation on the Earth at this point, we do this by doing intensity is the power over the unit area. And so we do 3.90 times 10 to the 26 over 4 pi 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters all squared. So what this is, is this is the amount of uh, power, or the, sorry, the intensity of the solar radiation at a distance away of Earth's orbit. And we get a value of 1,379 watts per meter squared. However, we're given a little bit more information. We know that the average albedo is 0.3. So we know that 30% of this energy is going to be reflected. What we're interested in, in this case, is the, the intensity on the solar panel. So we want to know what's being absorbed, not what's being reflected. So if the average albedo is 0.3, then the absorbed is going to be 0 0.7 times the 1379 that we found. And that gives us a value of 965 watts per meter squared. So this is the intensity of light when the sun is directly above. We're going to change it up a bit here. Now we're going to do the radiant power of the sun is the same. And the average distance from the sun to the moon is about the same as the earth. And what we're finding is the temperature of the moon, if we know the radius of the moon is this, and the average, the albedo, is 0.14. So we're going to model this in a few different ways. Um, first of all, we've already done one calculation. We already know the intensity. We did this in example two. But we have the sun in the center. And here's the moon. And this is the distance, radius r. And we know that's coming out. So the intensity that's going to reach the moon, we calculated in the previous question, is the power over the area. So the intensity is the 3.9 times 10 to the 26 over 4 pi 1.5 times 10 to the 11 all squared. And we get 1379 watts per meter squared. So that's going to be the intensity reaching the moon. Then we know the albedo is 0.14, which tells us that 86% is going to be absorbed. If 14% is reflected, 86% is absorbed. So if we want to know the total there, we can do 0 0.86 times 1379. So we know that the intensity reaching the surface is going to be 1,185 watts per meter squared. Now, if we're estimating the surface temperature of the moon, we're calculating an average here. We need to know the average power being absorbed by the moon. And this is where the radius is going to come in. It's going to help us out. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that the part of the moon that's receiving radiation is a, we're going to model the moon as like a flat disk. So we know it's a sphere, but we're going to model the moon. And because there's incident radiation from the sun coming in like this, and it's coming on only on half of the moon. So we're going to imagine that the moon is a flat disk, and the radius, the area, sorry, is pi r squared. So that's how much intensity is coming onto the moon. However, if we want to estimate the surface temperature, if we want to have a good estimate of it, we're going to do this over the entire planet. We want to average this energy over the entire surface. And the entire surface 
is the surface of the moon, the sphere. And that is 4 pi r squared. So the average intensity is going to be equal to the incoming intensity I that we just calculated times the circular uh, area that's being hit with solar light right now. But if we want to average that, we have to average that over the entire surface. So we do 4 pi r squared. And it turns out if you do this and you divide it, you don't need the radius of the moon actually. You can just divide the incoming intensity by 4. And this applies to the moon and the Earth, any sort of spherical planet, you can apply it. Because the pi is divided by r squared. So the average intensity is i over 4. So in our case, I'm going to take the 1185, divide by 4, and we get 296. So we're getting there. There's one more step to this, though, if we want to estimate the surface temperature, what the moon is going to be. So what we're saying is that the moon is absorbing 296 watts per meter squared. So let's imagine the moon is a black body and it absorbs all this energy. If it's absorbing that much energy per meter squared, what would the temperature be? We can go back to another law, the Stefan-Boltzmann law. So we know that power is Stefan-Boltzmann constant area, t to the power of 4. And we know power per unit area is intensity, so we can say that in this case the intensity is equal to sigma times t to the power of 4. So in order to solve for the temperature, we take the fourth root of the intensity divided by the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. And when we do this in our calculator, we get a temperature of 269 Kelvin. Okay, so that's how we use um, albedo in uh, calculating temperatures and energy and intensity on the, in the Sun-Earth system.